Okay, so let's start this over again. I'm calling to order the emergency meeting of the EDC on August 11th. It's 8.09. Um, it, the agenda is to discuss uh, options for completing the employee lost wages um, funding program. Um, I will call for citizen comments in a moment. Uh, well, let me, uh, actually, let me just ask, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Hearing none, I will call for citizen comments in one moment, but I just want to provide background since this is an emergency meeting. Uh, the uh, application period, one week period closed on Wednesday evening. Um, we received 163 applications for funding for a total of $74,000 requested. I believe that three or four of the applicants may not be eligible because they work for businesses that aren't based in Woodstock, but that won't change our discussion because it's a small number. Um, about 65% of the applicants came from the Woodstock Inn. Um, there were about 20 businesses that uh, whose employees applied and um, no other uh, business had more than 10 applicants, a few. and at least half of the businesses had one. So that gives you a sense of where the applications came from. Um, we allocated $45,000 to the program. If we were to follow the original prioritization rules, which we set and which were approved by the select board, we would give the 130 applicants who were entitled to the $500, we would give them each about $330 and that would use up the funding. There would be no funding left for the, I think 28 people or so who applied for less than 20 hours of lost wages. If we were to fully fund the program, we would need to allocate an additional somewhere between 27 to 29,000. Let's just say 29,000. And we don't know exactly how many people are ineligible. So up to 29,000. In order to give everyone either the five hundred dollars or the two hundred fifty dollars that they needed, um, we do not expect to receive that twenty nine thousand in this year's revenues, but we will certainly receive it next year, and we will still have substantial funds left over next year for our other programs. Obviously, we won't have the twenty nine thousand, but our revenues run north of two hundred thousand dollars a year, even in the worst years of COVID. So that's kind of the background. Um, let me then call for citizen comments. And I, if someone else could call on them because I can't see anything. Sure, I'll do it. Sam? Hey everyone, uh, thanks for this program and everything you're doing with it. I think it's really important. Um, as I said to uh, John in an email, the uh, money that is provided to the EDC comes pretty much directly from businesses that are were the most affected by this and also the hard and directly from all the hard work of um, these employees. Um, you know, there I say it about my business and I'm I'm sure everyone says it about theirs as well. You know, your business is only as good as the people that you have working there. Um, and a town runs only as good as the people who work there as well. So in times of like this, prioritizing them, um, especially emergency situations, should be a priority. Um, that being said, I would am not would not suggest you know uh, taking away already like um, approved grants and funds. I think that uh, sets. Um, a dangerous precedence for you, but if anything, potentially deferring if need be, um, and asking if anyone's any of the great any maybe any of the people who it's been a lot allocated is your project delayed, you know, like can you wait, you know, a few months for five like five thousand dollars or something, and if you take it like if you find three or four projects or five projects that would be willing to do that. Um, you know, I I of course don't know what the money has been allocated to, so I'm you know I'm I'm speaking not knowing having knowledge of that. Um, but and I've I've heard talk that there's potential for an emergency fund in the future, 
So that's great too. Maybe you can even say like, hey, we have to do this this time, but like in the future, this shouldn't be an issue. Like this is not a precedence we, we expect to be an issue because we're planning on in the future having an emergency fund for exactly these kind of situations. Um, not trying to tell you guys how to do your jobs, just some of my suggestions. Um, and, um, you know, also it is my understanding that a lot of the in employees were still able to work some, maybe not their full amount, but still received some kind of wage. Um, there were a lot of restaurants and stuff like that where their employees received nothing for the entire time. Um, so that could maybe be a factor in it too. Like, and I think John even asked that in the email, like how many hours did the employee miss? Um, I think that's a good, imp an important question to ask. Um, I also think it's an important um, factor to factor in those of the those of um, who don't live within the area that the hub assists as well, because we do have um, I have at least two to three employees who do not live within that area. I'm sure that's true for a lot of other businesses in town as well, just because it's not really affordable <laughs> um, to live in the area for a lot of people. Um, Luckily, Bridgewater is considered because like 90% of the people who work for me live in Bridgewater. Um, but anyway, so those are those are the things I would, I think I, it sounds to me like you guys are already thinking of that and factoring it in. So maybe me speaking on this is just a moot point. Um, but, you know, I, I mean, keep in mind, like the like I said, these, the workers are really need to be a priority and, um, you know, they'll remember this if you nickel and dime them, you know, if you told them $500 and then they're you're like, it's $334 because of this and that, you know, they're going to remember that when they see in the paper, oh, we spent like this much on this, you know, on like, I don't know, whatever, I, some, trash cans or whatever it's the first thing that came to mind but um they're gonna remember hey i asked for and like they nickel and dived me but they're gonna give how much towards this and like my hard work directly goes into this fund um you know i think that that's important um so anyways i do have to uh sign off i have uh to get back to i think i can hear my timer going off and i've got to pull some muffins out of the oven so i'm gonna go but thank you all for everything you're doing and listening to me and i appreciate you thanks sam we appreciate thanks, the sam. Thank thanks you. for coming in all right thanks any other public comments no hearing none um are, are there any people you know so i, I maybe oh sorry todd go ahead I mean, if we all read your document, which I assume we have, maybe we can just state our positions and see if we need further discussion in the effort of time. If that's, that's okay, I would be happy to state mine. Okay, great. Why don't you go ahead and please uh, briefly, and then let's see where we are. It's a great idea. Great. I'm, I'm, I'm in full favor of um, pulling monies from FY 2024 to fill the gap um, for full, uh, full repayment uh, per the guidelines. Okay, thank you. Joe? Well, I have a question. Um, probably from 2024, it, it would involve a process. Does that slow things down, John? No. Oh. Yeah, let me just explain the, the, the funding thing. So, so the, short, the quick answer to your question, Joe, is no. Um, here's how I think we would deal with it. Um, we have more than enough fund. We have $650,000 in cash. Um, the amount of cash that we you know, and that cash will go down over the remaining of the part of the year and it will go up. We will get tax revenues for, we will get two more tax payments, one in four days and one in the middle of November. Uh, what, uh, and we will be distributing grants that have already been awarded. Um, I, there's, we have never taken back a grant. Even in COVID, we did what Sam suggested, which was we voluntarily asked grantees if they would defer their grant and we promised that they would be the first in line to get funding as soon as money came in uh which money will come in again in the worst year we had in the worst year of COVID, our revenues were two hundred thousand dollars 
We're forecasting our revenues this year to be about 360,000. Last year, they were 380,000. So we're, we're not talking about running out of money. We're talking about the possibility of temporarily not having cash. We don't need to deal with that issue now because we have lots of funds in the bank. If you asked me to guess, I would say we wouldn't have to do any of these things that the timing of the cash payments and the timing of the cash inflows would allow us to pay everything and without asking anyone to be inconvenienced. Yeah, no, but, John, that, that is my question. My question is, I know we have the money. Um, my question is um, the process. Yeah, and no. Slow things down and we have to go to the select board again and do all that uh, we, we, stuff. We need to go to the select board to approve the a, the additional funding if we vote for that today. They're having a special meeting on Tuesday. We've worked out with the town that we will give them the check payments on Monday morning before select board approval. And we're doing this with the concurrence of the chair of the select board because he believes, I think correctly, that the select board will absolutely approve this. It will take them three minutes. <laughs> and okay. so with it, it will not slow us down to fund it in this way. Okay, thank you. Sorry for that. So, Joe, do you want to state what your view is? Oh, I, I, I totally support this whole process. Yes, it, it, uh, it's a good thing to do. You're agreeing with Todd, then? Yes, absolutely. Larry? Well, my, I'll, I'll start with my answer is that I'll vote in favor of it. I, I feel like there are lots of problems. I think um, our heart's in the right place. We were in a big hurry. But we've adopted a shotgun approach. We're giving everybody, we're not, this is not sensitive to actual need. I think we could have given a lot more money to people who actually needed it and not money to other people, but we didn't have anything put in place at the time. Um, I don't like jumping in, uh, going into a future fund. And I think we need to be very explicit as to why we're doing it and that it has to be not just an emergency, but a townwide emergency. I don't think we're in the business of supporting other businesses who can't afford or don't pay their employees when they run into trouble. I don't think that's what the genesis of this was. Actually, when Sam said, we're going to lose our employees. Now, I don't know how many people, you know, John, who responded, said something about, uh, well, without this $500, we were going to lose, we we're going to leave. That's why we started this program. So I think... Uh, I want to support the workers, um, uh, and I think this is great. We've got we've got a big heart, um, and I think we should stick stick with it. But I think we should be very careful going forward that this doesn't represent our best efforts and the most sensitive efforts, and is uh, an exceptional situation. Well said. Okay, thanks. Can I say something to that though? I mean, I, I agree with Larry. Um, but I think it should be noted that this is not, this is a very unique situation. I mean, it, this is unusual. Uh, it doesn't happen, but last time it happened where we had to take drastic steps was COVID. That was what, three, four years ago. Prior to that was Irene, which was 12 years ago. Um, and I think it'd be good and, and, and present a good image to the town for the business folks, particularly the workers, to appreciate the fact that uh, during such drastic situations, the EDC has their back. And I, and I do agree with Larry with being careful about how it's presented and how we move forward with this and that those points may be made explicitly clear. Uh, Marion? Yeah, I think, um, I, you know, so far I agree with everything. I think we, we publicly stated that we were gonna give this money and I feel like um, we should we should keep that commitment. Um, and I think going into next year's money is fine. I think, you know, thinking about how we talk about this, we really did start this as a way to support businesses because we know that one of the biggest problems is staffing. And that's why we're doing, you know, that's that's why we're doing affordable housing. That's why we're working on child care. And although in our hearts, we may feel like we really want to help people and that's absolutely a good thing. Uh, I, I just think sort of being thoughtful about how we sort of stay on, on track as the EDC is probably helpful too. Um, but that's, yes, basically long, short version, I agree. Okay, thanks. Deborah and then Greta. 
Yeah, I <clears throat> agree with everybody. Um, my heart is in the right place. I don't think as is an EDC, we can, as the EDC, we can back up. I think that will be a very bad thing. Like um, Sam had said, nickel and diming, the people who actually keep the town going, which are these workers would be a very bad thing. I think it's a really complicated thing to go to the community to ask them to subsidize something we came up with. Um, so I feel like it's our responsibility to figure out how to make it work. So we have to go into, I think we have to go into the, the funds in the future if it's possible for us to do that. Um, I, I do think that there are things that are inherently, you know, 2020 vision wrong with, it's a shame certain things that, you know, we put into motion that created this scenario um, and, you know, live and learn. And maybe there's an opportunity for us to have conversations, not before we're doing the next granting, but um, let's have a conversation of, um, you know, what do we do in emergency situations? Like, how do we handle certain things? We're not going to be able to forecast everything, but maybe there's some learning that we can sit down and have some forethought into some of the things that have come up during Irene, during this last flood, during COVID, that we can have some kind of base um, so that we're not knee jerking. And I do think this 500 is going to be important to, you know, some people that it's going to be really meaningful to who are living paycheck to paycheck. So I feel really good about the program and I feel really good about um, moving forward with uh, taking it from next year if we have to. Greta? I'm in full support of pulling from 2024 and um, I will be signing off in four minutes. So if we could do the vote, that would be. <laughs> okay, I'm in support of it as well. So um, uh, so I'll make a motion that, that the EDC uh, there's a couple of things to discuss briefly after this, but they don't, um, they, they may not require a vote. Um, they don't require a vote in my view, but um, so I will make a motion then that the EDC uh, uh, allocate up to $29,000 parentheses. The up to is because I don't, I think we may need a little bit less than that if there are people that are ineligible up to $29,000 to fully fund the 163 applications that turn out to be eligible for this program. Is there a second? Second. All right. All in, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay, um, just for the record, so Joe Natali, Larry Niles, Todd Allman, Marion Abrams, Greta Calabrese, Deborah Green, and John Spector are attending the meeting, along with Stuart Matthews and Sam D. Natali. That's just for the video. So I guess, well, I guess people can see it on the video anyway. Okay, so um, that's great. Uh, the, we have, um, we have, I have been contacted by an individual, not a business, um, who is interested in really making a, a donation. I think there's a question, this doesn't have to be a formal part of our program or it could be a formal part of our program. Uh, should we reach out for community support? Should we accept community support and acknowledge it? Um, should we discourage it? Does anyone have a point of view about that, Todd? Yeah, I think I think we should do it in the way that, or a similar way to, that I expressed earlier, which is separate from the EDC and community strife, and that we should maintain our independence right. in, in the way that we have. I don't find it appropriate to reach out personally to individual funds for EDC business. I'm personally not against corporate funds, but I understand um, from your verbiage in the document that's also dicey. So um, I think that we've been running a clean ship um, and that love it or hate it, we've made our decisions and that those are relying on our own bank accounts and our own wills and votes. So I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy the way it's set up now and, and, I'm, and I'm comfortable reaching out as the EDC uh, for additional funds in that way, unless it was directly yeah. from a municipality. Okay, uh, Greta, so because she has to leave, and then and then Stuart, and then Joe. I feel like accepting the funds is totally fine. I don't think we should necessarily go out asking for them because, as someone said earlier, we are the ones who came up with this program, and it might seem irresponsible if we're like, now we need the money. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I called on Stuart, but this, I'm not sure, Stuart, if you raised your hand. If you didn't, don't don't unmute yourself. I know Stuart is in a car, 
But if you would like to talk, you, you can go ahead. Otherwise, I'll call on Joe. Of course, Stuart is driving, so I, I'm, I'm not sure if unmuting will put his life at risk, which I'm not intending to do. All right, so he's staying mute. So I think he's not he's not raising his hand. Joe? Oh, uh, I, I, I agree with Todd. I, I think we, yes, we should uh, we should uh, continue our independence and, and, and not, I mean, there, there are other avenues that that uh, well well intended and good-hearted people can can uh, donate their money to for the town, but uh, I, I think we should we should run our own ship and and um, and uh, be very grateful for for their um, uh, willingness to participate. But at this point, I think we should do it on our own. Okay. Are there any other comments? Oh, Stuart is now looks like you're unmuted. Stuart? Maybe he's not unmuted. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> I would say, I mean, to me, it's almost like partnering and there are going to be things like with housing and other things that we are going to be partnering with people and that are going to be, you know, adding our funds, the EDC funds to their funds. So I think if somebody comes forward for something that we're doing, that's fine. But I, I the pursuing, like Greta, like Greta said, doesn't feel kosher, you know? Um, if somebody happens to come forward and say, you know, there's a shortfall, I want to be a part of it. I don't see a problem with that. I just, but I don't, I don't like the pursuing. Okay, hold on one second. Stuart is texting me. I think he, and Marion has her hand raised, John, also. Oh, okay. So he's pulled over when he's texting. I can I can go while you're waiting to figure out um Stuart. Um I was just gonna say that um, you know, we're having this emergency meeting. We want to get this turned around quickly, we want to get the money out. I, I would be hesitant for us to decide in principle how we feel about working with donations and asking for additional money in this meeting, because I think that's like a, a bigger discussion and I would like more time to think about it. Um, and, you know, in terms of this particular program, I don't have a strong opinion, but I just would caution us from kind of setting precedent with how we feel about it in the future this morning. Uh, okay, I, um, fair. okay, thank you. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Okay. Am I okay? Can you guys hear me? I mean, we already voted to get the money from 24. Yeah, no, so correct. I, 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 I guess I just have one. I guess I have one uh, a procedural question, which is: so, is it fair to say I don't think we need to vote on this because it's not select board funding? But is it fair to say that if we had an unsolicited, if we had unsolicited offers, that we ex would accept them, but that we would not reach out to the community to try to accept them? I mean, to try to generate them. It, it I makes think me what I heard was, I think what I heard right now is. We decided that we're going to pull from next year, and today is not the the moment to decide whether to okay. accept it or not. Yeah, okay, I think fine. I agree with that. Yeah, it's a moot okay. point so that then, we're done uh, with this business. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fine. So then we will we will uh, fine. So that we this is an issue that could be brought up in the future. We should we should talk about it for sure, and I agree with you completely. Yeah. I, can I can I make a okay? Then the last item I just want to get this is really just for council and so forth is the, is the communication of this decision. I, I agree with Larry and other people who talked about the importance of communicating this, sort of setting our rationale for why this and why in the future not this or why in the past we've done something like this. You know, um, and I also think that that ties into continued persistent misunderstandings about who is paying for the funds. Yeah, like what Sam said was not correct. It, it, well, it's it's not incorrect it's, it's, either, but right, it's certainly exactly. not completely correct. Exactly. Uh, I think that that message needs to be very carefully crafted and I'm not sure that we can do that between now and Tuesday. <laughs> so m my suggestion would be that we basically in announcing this that we that we simply I do that we just simply announce it and that within a month we basically have a public statement that we can explain our broader philosophy which includes this and maybe inc 
include other things. I, I, I think that that may even have more impact, but I, I don't want to, I'm not trying to minimize the impact. I'm actually just trying to get the communication correct because I agree with the concerns that Larry's raised and his vote. So are people okay if we don't make that communication now, but that we do agree to make Can it? You a, say a, what you're saying? John, I don't, I don't know what you, what you mean. Like, so what's the communication that will go the out? Communication is, is that the EDC has held an emergency meeting we just come up with say, you know we discuss the issues and you know there while there are some concerns we just simply the edc has had a meeting and we've decided to fully fund it we believe that this is an important need of local businesses john, that's it john may i say right. something todd has his hand up todd and then joe yeah really really quick i think i think this thing i i agree with larry literally 110 percent. i think this thing i think we just say we had the emergency meeting that we took the money from FY24. This is unprecedented times. We support the local workers. I think maybe in the future, maybe even the short-term future, next few months, we should perhaps consider some sort of memorandum of understanding about what, what the EDC is and looking back on our role in this and sort of a post-mortem on this and future potential disasters. And that might be something that, you know, John, and there's many people, I'm not good at this, many people are great at writing these sorts of of things and that could really help the community when the dust is settled not taking away any goodwill you know things are back uh that's what i would support uh, really diving into something like that um in the, in the near future joe and then larry could you comment on this suggestion joe yes i think it i think it's this, the suggestion is well uh well thought of and well spoken to but i also feel it would be great on our part if we put our next month agenda uh, an opportunity to discuss an emergency fund for future needs or events like this. In other words, we're telling the community, listen, this time we're coming up the bat. Um, it's, it was something unexpected and we are meeting the challenge, but we anticipate this won't be the last crisis that Woodstock will have to endure and that we are planning for the future, uh, for any other future crisis by setting up some sort of an emergency fund. A discussion along those lines and on the agenda for next month, I think would be important. Okay, we'll put it on the agenda. Positive effect on, on the community. I'd okay. like to add something to that though, Joe. Before we go out saying we're gonna create this emergency fund, I think- I'm saying we should discuss it, not create it, discuss okay. it discuss it. All I'm saying is I think the first step to that is everything that um, Larry and Todd and I were just saying. Yes, I agree. Let's first have the conversation about what it is and how it is, what we've learned and how we're going to move forward in the future when stuff like this happens. And then we talk about having the emergency fund. Well, that's, the, that's part of the whole discussion I'm suggesting. Okay. okay. We're all talking about the same thing. That's yeah. awesome. I agreed yeah. on the sequence of things. I, I mm -hmm. What I'm proposing and Todd, I think, was endorsing uh, and, and I think Joe too was. I, I have a very specific tactical question. Between now and Tuesday, I, I'm going to post something on the listserv. I, I would like to not have to, for me or or any of us, to have to craft that communication between now and Tuesday, because I think that communication is subtle and complicated and it's really important to get it right i agree with the points that larry is making but i think making them in a way that doesn't divide the community is it requires some real work it's sort of like the thing that says i didn't have time to write a short memo so i wrote a long one it's a short communication yeah, we need we need yeah. to we need to get it right. So Larry, would you be comfortable specifically since you raised the concern very clearly, would you be comfortable with not making that communication now, but making it in the near term? And I would say in the next month or so, not, not oh, two, three months. Absolutely. And I don't, I think a very short statement is the appropriate way to go right now. And then let's, let's talk about this stuff. Okay. Marion. Uh, I guess I don't have to say anything. I was just going to say, I agree with that. Less is more for the short term until we can think it through. Okay. Okay, good. Then, then we have our when we've great. approved money, we we will announce it as if you know we're just approving it, which is great. We have an agenda item for this for the September third, I think it is, whatever the September first, September seventh meeting, which I think is a very good discussion. And I think it's both a discussion of, well, it's a, it's a linked discussion of communication, 
for what we just did and lessons learned and an emergency fund and uh, for the future, which may, which may tie into that. All right. Is there any other business that we need to discuss? I don't think so. No. None. Is there a motion to, Oh, sorry, Jill, did you want to make a comment? You're muted, Jill. Jill is an expert at zoom. I don't know why. There we there go. We go. Um, my fingers in the wrong place. Um, I'm sorry, I just came into the end of your discussion, but I do want to say that I've been there's been conversations between different towns in Vermont. There are many towns who already have business recovery things set up, and there's one person in particular that I would suggest one of you talks to before the September meeting to gather some information. Okay, thanks. Could you send that to us, Jill? Yes. Could you send it to everyone so that I don't have to? But if you just if you don't have everyone's email address, send it to me and I'll distribute it. Okay, great. All right, thanks. All right, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. Joe made. Is there a second? Second. second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thanks everybody for your thanks. flexibility. You. By the way, I, it wasn't said here, but it needs to be said. I mean, I noted it in my memo. There is and I think Larry would be in this category as well. There, there's people are very appreciative of this, of this initiative. And I absolutely understand the concerns that Larry have. I, I have them myself, but uh, we've, it, this has really helped a very important group of people and the community completely recognizes it. And is the comments that I've heard are uniformly positive. So uh, right. now they're probably not thinking about the subtleties that, of the issues that we're dealing with here, but um, in any event, I think we've had a real impact and it um, and it was a very worthwhile program. Good government, people. Good government. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye.